Oh, do you guys remember Jack? I do. You guys remember Kelshaw, right? He's right. here to help me review this. This can save you up to $10,000. All right, maybe not 10,000. I might be exaggerating because nobody knows what the fines are. This, I'm glad you asked, is the Ruco R111 remote ID module that's required by the FAA for certain people. And I'm one of those people, unfortunately. But Ruco sent us this asking us to review it. And what is that supposed to do to save you $10,000? It sets on the drone and it's called a digital license plate for your drone. And what, it, what, what I mean by that is it emits a signal that goes into the air and the FAA and law enforcement can track your drones while they're flying. It's kind of a downer. <laughs> I know, it sounds like a little bit of Big Brother tracking you. It is. Okay, well, who, who decided that this needed to be a law and that everybody had to comply with it? The FAA, I guess. I really don't know how it originated. When they first started this regulation and I got the 107 license, I had to go out and buy a bunch of these uh, modules for my, other, for my drones. Well, they were like $100 each. This one is like 39 bucks. So this is really a fair price. It's a great day to fly a drone, guys. <laughs> we chose poorly. When we get to the spot, I'll pull it out of the box. Actually, you go ahead and pull it out of the box now. See if you can do it without spilling everything all over the place. And we'll show the camera what it is. Uh, but it's a, really small, <laughs> it's a really small uh, RID unit that's smaller than... Well, I got Holy Stone um, modules for originally. Uh -huh. And this is a little bit smaller than that. And it weighs a little bit less also. So that's what it looks like in the box. You get your own... Like, let me see it. You get your own attachment configurations with some Velcro. That's a charging cord, and you also get some zip ties. I want you guys to know that these FAA rules are regulations in the USA and not any other country that I know of. So you may be asking yourself, why the heck am I watching this video then if it doesn't apply to me? Well, this thing here has a special feature that we're going to show you when we get to do our, I guess, demo. You're going to be impressed, and I think that even if you don't have the FAA regulations or requirements that we're talking about here, you may still want to buy this and put it on your drone. So what's the special uh, feature of this? Well, I was going to tell them when we got to do our flight, but since you asked, I'll go ahead and tell them now. Okay. This has a special tracking feature built into it, and Ruco has developed their own uh, app that goes along with the module. So you can track this device, or you can track this module, if your drone gets lost. So I know that DJI has the Find My Drone feature on their drones, and a lot of other drones have that feature as well. But if your battery gets dislodged out of your drone, or if the app just crashes or something, how else are you going to find your drone whenever, whenever you lose it? Well, this is at least a second way or a second option that you have to find your drone. So that's a pretty cool feature that they built into that. Nice. But it does have a limited range of five to 800 meters. Ah. So you got to kind of make sure that you're within that visual line of sight. Now, what you're going to be doing is I'm going to fly the drone with this on it, and we're going to make sure that it works the way that it's supposed to, and it's going to display all the telemetry and stuff. But when I come back with the drone, I'm going to have you take the drone from where we're at. I'm going to have you walk away with it and hide it from me. I'm going to see if I can use the app on this to find the drone. So did I tell you that this battery takes 40 minutes to charge, but lasts up to five hours? Really? Did I already say no, that? No, you did not say that. It's a good thing I mentioned it. If it seems like we went forward in time, we kind of did. We went to eat, we found our spot, and I got the drone out. Don't know if you guys can see the windshield, but it's still spitting at us. Well, I, I guess we could get it out of the box, and I could show them what the device looks like. I think that's a great idea. We're sitting here waiting, right? Yeah. yeah. There's the module. Do you guys remember Jack? Anyway, I want to show you guys the size difference between this remote ID module and the Holy Stone that I paid really good money for, well over $100. Um, you can see how much smaller this drone is, or this remote ID module is than the Holy Stone. He had a good idea. I need to replace this while I'm thinking about it. So I'm just going to put the Roku module on top of, oh, put the wrong kind of Velcro on it. Are you serious? <laughs> the loop velcro on both of these or the hook or whatever that's called that ain't gonna work cut now that i've got the right piece of velcro on here i'm gonna take the roku module and put it on jack now we're squared away nice <laughs> there's the manual a lot of good stuff in here if you're like me you've got a thing on your phone that says drone stuff and it's got all these different things listed in here well this is the drone scanner so we're going to start that up and that's what it, that's how it pulls up onto the screen but now that I got the Ruco device or Ruco scanner 
app on the screen, we can turn on the RUCO device. So if you hit this power button right here, you just hold the power button down, the light will turn green, and it's going to flash back and forth until it finds a signal. So I'm just going to set it down and let it find its signal. And there it is. It's already populated, so it's already got its signal. I guess the information that we've got at our disposal here is we've got distance from me, we've got height, altitude, all that stuff. Well, right now it's all zeros because it thinks that it's setting still, which it is. And none of those numbers are changing right now. That's I wonder why. Maybe look at the manual. On the scanner app here, there is a video. We're learning how to use this again. <laughs> the light is suddenly solid, so I think that we're set. So I can turn this video off and go back to the app. We're going to go to drones around. And now our drone is, is listed on there again. So let me click on that to get the details. It says distance for me 146 feet. I don't think so. I don't think that's right. Unless it thinks I'm over there. Well, now it's, it looks like it's uh, correcting itself. It's down to 17 feet. So if I lift the drone up like this, it's now saying that it's 1.6 feet up in the air. So I think that's going to work. I think it's going to work out good. Good. Well, I'm going to get everything started here. Altitude pressure is 116 or 111.6 feet. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. You might have to get the manual. I was telling you guys earlier, this is Jack. He's our first drone. Well, we've got him on a really old firmware. And while we're sitting here waiting for him to get his satellites, which I hope he gets because we haven't flown him in quite a while, I'm going to go to the About tab and I want to show you what information we've got on him. We're using Jack the Drone. He's our DJI Mini 2. His aircraft firmware is 1.03.0000, so that's really old stuff. The RC firmware is pretty old as well. But then the fly app version, I want you to see this, 1.4.8. We're at like 1.14.0 right now. So this is a really old firmware, or fly app version. But it's worked perfectly ever since we've installed it. How come you haven't updated it? Because he's old school. <laughs> All right, well, we got 13 satellites. This is still saying that it's 14 feet away from me. <laughs> All this test is right now, we're just going to launch Jack from the truck here. We're going to fly him away, and we're going to just make sure that the... RID module displays the information that it's supposed to. And right now it's displaying information. I just don't know how accurate it is. Maybe it'll get more accurate the further away he gets, hopefully. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> so we're going to launch Jack. It stopped raining. Pull the sticks together. Remember this? Used to be able to do that with, uh, with drones, but you, you can't do that anymore for some reason. Let me get him pulled over to the left here. Go forward. And now we're in front of the truck. I'm going to turn him around so you guys can see him in the uh, in the, the dash cam. So there he is. Oh, he's, he raised up because he, he realized that there's a truck underneath him. That looks pretty good, though. Let's see what the numbers are on the thing now. It says 12 feet away from me, 10 feet away, 1.6 feet high. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise him up and make sure there's no obstacles. I'm going to raise him up into the air and see if the height thing on this uh, app keeps, keeps increasing. So right now we're... About 30 feet high is what it's saying. This says 40 feet. So it's 35 feet on the app and it's 40, oh, well, it's 37 feet on the RUCO app. So it's actually pretty accurate. What I want to do is just, I want to turn around and I want to fly out towards this field here. And I want to follow along the information that the uh, display is showing. So now we're facing pretty much to our front here into this field. I'm going to pull the gimbal down a little bit and raise up a little bit more and just fly straight out and hopefully it tracks it correctly. <laughs> I hope it does. There he goes, he's flying right over that field right now. We are, it says we're 70 feet high, but on the Fly app, on the DJI Fly app, it's only showing that we're 60 feet high. Well, they adjusted to 64 feet. The module got its spot here, and the drone was right outside the window, so it's pretty close. It right. should be the same. Should be close enough. It's really close now. Now it's saying it's 57.4 feet, and this says 56 feet. So now it looks like it's pretty accurate. What about the distance? Distance from on the fly, on the fly app is 293 feet. Distance on the drone scanner app or the fly the Ruco scanner app is 287 feet. So it's only off by just a few feet. All right, let's get Jack back here to the truck, and we'll uh, have Kelshaw take a hike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be lazy and try to catch it out the window again. Let me get the camera up so we can say hi to the people. Hi, people. Hi, Jack. <laughs> All right, we got you, buddy. So right now, the information that's displayed on the RUCO app seems to be pretty close to what the DJI Fly app is, dem is displaying, so I think it's pretty accurate. So now it's time for Kelshaw to take the drone 
and to walk out and he's going to hide it from me. Now I told him to not try to not hide it under like a bush or anything. We're going to simulate a crash here. That's what that's what we're going to do, right? Don't watch where Okay, I won't it. watch it. You have to We've close your eyes. The screen here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin. Do you want a, a paper or a plastic bag? For what? To put them in it to protect them. <laughs> Maybe you could put blinders on them. <laughs> well, actually, wait till you get there to put them in the bag. All these instructions. I know, all these demands. Wish me luck. Okay, here we go. All right. Got the, got the drone. Got Kevin. Now, don't watch. All right. Okay. I've got the screen recording, but I'm not going to watch. All right, let's see where we're going to put this bad boy here. So now we're going to put them in a bag and protect them. All right, how's that? The general direction that he walked is that way. Oh, he's coming back. He's on the sidewalk. Well, how'd it go? All right, Kev, we are down and dirty. I want you to look at the screen on the on the phone. Uh -huh. I'm going to read these height and distance to you. Tell me if they're similar. So the height says negative 3.3 feet. Got zero feet. Okay. The distance says 228.7 feet. 229. Oh, wow. That's so it's pretty close. Now it went down to 217. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, I guess I'm going to go try to find this thing. Now, you can come on in here because you're not going to, like, follow me, are you? Do you want me to? You can if you want to. Right, but I want to, I want to show the audience <laughs> about this map. So what you do is, is you scroll down. You, you take the, map, the, the app here and you scroll this back down. So now you've got a map. And you've got to shrink this down so you can find out exactly where you are. So right now, you can see that the drone is the little pin. And I am the circle with the arrow. And it's showing that I'm pretty much got this phone pointed straight down East Essex Road. So I know that the drone went that way. So if I turn the camera or the phone this way, it's going to point me in the direction of where that drone is. So looking at it like this, the drone should be about in that line right there. So we'll see how accurate this is once we start taking our walk. Oh, I couldn't cheat if I wanted to. Look, <laughs> you got it in a plastic bag. <laughs> oh, no. What I just did. Oh my gosh. The very first thing I stepped in a water puddle. You've got to be kidding me. You know, watch where you're going. <laughs> Apparently not. All right, so I've got the app open. And like I was explaining to you, I've got the arrow pointed directly. Now it's allegedly directly towards the drone. So we are 215 feet away. So I'm just going to start walking in that direction and see if it can get us to this, uh, to this drone. This probably isn't the most exhilarating part of the video. But it's exciting to me because I got to find Jack and save his life. All right, so if I turn back to the right here, now I'm, I'm not facing towards it now. I don't want to walk through that grass. I'm going to stay on, well, I might as well. I might as well walk through the grass. My feet are already wet. That's right. All right, so I'll just keep walking down the sidewalk here. And once I get close, like to the side of it, I'll turn the, can or turn the phone around to point right in the direction of it. So I'm going to keep on walking here. We're closing in on it. We're 130 feet away. 130 feet is actually a long ways. We're down to 105 feet. I guess we'll hear my feet squeaking. Like you do. <laughs> so we'll walk through this uh, little area here. So we're 72 feet away. We're getting closer. It's not in the middle of the grass here. 50 feet. I'm walking right towards it. Now it says we're 36 feet. Now we're walking into the grass. Oh, man, this is soggy. All right, am I close? <laughs> 21 feet away. All right, so I'm, I'm, looks like I'm right there. All right, it says that I'm, I'm supposed to be looking at it right now. Is that right? Eight feet. I'm not seeing it. Now my arrow is all off. That looks like that could be it. I see a bag. It's not perfect. Is this it? Yep. Holy crap, I found it. Look at this soggy mess. Okay, so it says that we're 29 feet away from it, 35 feet. So if this is the module, and it is, look at what I found. So it's sort of accurate, I guess. It's not perfect, but at least it got me in the general vicinity. Not bad. Right. It says I'm 33 feet away from it now. <laughs> All right, guys, we finally made it back into the truck, and my feet are still wet. But I think that demo went pretty well. It, it 
Obviously, it's not perfect. It's not dead on. But it was definitely enough to get me in the vicinity of where the drone was, and I could at least look around and use my senses and try to find it. So good job, Ruko. I think that's a pretty cool feature. The most important thing about this, though, is that it's transmitting information for the FAA to see or to be able to see, and that way you're going to be in compliance with their regulations. And that's how you're going to save $10,000. I'd like to thank Ruko for sending this out to us, letting us try it out. I think they got a pretty good product here. It does what it's supposed to do. If you guys are interested in finding out more information about this RUCO RID module, click on the link in the description. There will also be, hopefully, a discount code that you guys can save some more money on it. But it's listed right now for $39 on Amazon, which is not a bad price. If you guys enjoy the video, because Kelsh and I, we do make a pretty good team. We made another video a while back where we flew our Mini 4 Pro for five miles on the beach on an active track test. If you want to see that video, click on this link. I hope that you enjoy the video, guys. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. God bless.